Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, we've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing phenomenal. Uh, just uh, plugging away on my surface here. No plugs there. I don't even know what to say to that. I, I love it, Mike. Great job. You notice, you notice how he doesn't have video today? Wait, I don't I have video? What are you Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. My fellow Mac user, the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. good My video is working fine. Mine too. I just didn't hit the button. I forgot. That's all. Gee. You have to hit a button. It said Mike's was loading. <laughs> it did not say Mike's was loading. Thank That's you. not true. <laughs> we got the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing really well. Yeah. Happy to be on guys. Good to see you. And then, of course, we've got the brain, the professor. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. LandMoto.com. I'm going to start automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. PostingDomination.com forward slash TheLandGeek. And now, InvestorNinjas.com. Before the end of the podcast, we'll probably have another link to send you to. What's up, Scott Todd? How, how, how's your video after you restarted your Mac to join the podcast more? Since we're razzing on Mike. There is a low so blow my right AirPod just um, actually went out. So we're going to start the podcast. And the uh, we've got a really great topic. But before we get into it, I just want to say today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Um, start getting – look – Let's just face it. The best way to learn anything is by doing. But I would even iterate that more and say the best way to learn anything is by doing it with a master, a mentor, having them guide you, having them make little adjustments here and there, giving you that confidence, providing that accountability. The best way to start is with flight school. And the best way to learn more about flight school is just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Okay, this week's topic, I think, is a really important one. It's the reboot. Scott Todd, what's the reboot? All right, so let, let's just say that you have woken up today and you're like, you know what? I started this thing six months ago. I started this thing a year ago. Life got in the way. How do I get going again? What's the first thing I should do? So let's see what you guys come up with. Go. Zen Master, you get a call. Hey, Mike, uh, I love flight school. I learned a lot, but life got in the way. Where should I start? All right. Well, I'm going to say you get this machine rolling again with the only way you can get it rolling again with mailing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that you already get some kind of research down. I believe... This is like one of my favorite quotes from you, Mark, and this is not the quote of the day, by the way. This is a quote of Mark. It's a new problem, but a good problem. You would always say that over and over again. So what's a good problem? Tons of properties coming in deal flow. What's deal flow? Counter offers, accepted offers. What's the only way you get that is you execute massively on mailings. People worry, oh, what if I don't have enough money to buy? If you have properties lined up in your pipeline, the money, you're going to find someone to do a deal with you. you that, is a, that is a ridiculous problem to worry about. You just need to mail, mail. In fact, if someone had really no money, I would say put all your money into mailing because you get deals, you'll find someone to fund those deals with you. So I say if you're going to start over, you execute massively on mailing and get ready for the world, get ready for the, uh, the storm that's going to come. But it's a good storm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Eric Peterson, how would you advise someone to reboot? I think I'm right there with Mike. I mean, the, the first thing, if, if you've, you know, stopped doing the land business, uh, I assume you stopped mailing and, and you stopped, you know, kind of all the rest of the processes. But the only way to get going again is to begin mailing again. Now, if you've got some property in inventory and you're looking for a quick win, maybe, if you bought that property right, um, why not turn around and, and post it for wholesale? Um, you know, sell a property off and move on. You know, get back in the mailing, buy some more and, and continue the process. All right. Big Papa, how would you recommend someone reboot? You know, I really liked what Eric said. Um, 
I would continue on with Eric, what Eric was saying. If they need a reboot, go out there and market like you've never marketed before, right? The biggest way to get that fire lit again is with a sale, with a home run. And it doesn't even have to be a huge, you know, thousand percent ROI. You could flip something and make 50% 50, 50 on your money. And that is a huge, huge motivator. Um, and, and that's what I would tell you to do. Market like you've never marketed before because that's where you really start to see the money coming back to you. And nothing's more addicting than making money on your own. So market, market, market. All right. Scott Todd. I, I would go, and I'm assuming that you don't have land. Like, you know, you're looking at this and maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't love uh, the list scrubbing, maybe that became kind of the, the hurdle before. I would, I would stop like worrying about the list and I would race over to Landmoto, get a free account, landmoto.com forward slash pricing, get the free account so you can see the wholesale pricing of land, reach out to other land investors, buy some wholesale property and start marketing like immediately like jump on everything and like do do the routine like start the marketing and the reason for that is because you can you can start mailing and there's no problem with that but that's four to six weeks of downtime you can literally buy property this afternoon you can own it this afternoon and start marketing it tonight just by finding that wholesale land and getting going again and i'm telling you once you get the marketing channels up and you start to have some success and you start to get the, the energy going again, then start to dig into the pieces that were hard. So again, like maybe the mailing was the hard part for you, put it on pause. There's no problem. There's no shame in buying land wholesale. It's not cheating. It's, it's really a smart way of doing it because you're literally able to buy land today and start marketing it. And by the way, the first place I would market it to would be any of the email addresses that I would have come up with in the past, like through my prior marketing, I would make sure I go back to them and I would start with those people. Yeah, they may unsubscribe, no big deal. It's a reboot, just let it go. What happens, happens. If you lose the entire list because they all unsubscribe, who cares, you're rebooting. Start the marketing machine all over again and just start working it, but like, like has already been said, once you start having some success and you start getting the blood pumping again, it's going to be a lot easier to get the motivation back up again. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I liked everyone's answer. I, when I was thinking about the reboot, I was actually thinking about my own struggles with something that I might be struggling in life. So let's just take exercise, for example. So I'm on a really solid exercise regimen. And let's say, for example, I'm training with Tate. And Tate's got me going and I'm, I'm working out really hard. Now it's hard and it's challenging. And it's not as challenging because I'm on a ride with Tate. He's showing me how to use the proper form. He's showing me, you know, the best turns and the proper speed. And I've got all this confidence that, okay, with Tate, I've got a really strong, solid workout. I've really felt like I accomplished something. I feel great. Tate's like, okay, Mark, you're ready to train on your own now. I go home. I train on my own. It's not as fun. It's way more difficult. A month goes by. I start, you know, making excuses myself. I'll get back on the bike. Maybe I'll, I'll watch a YouTube video of Tate. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll buy lots. Something's going to re-energize me, but it's just, it's just not there. Finally, I get to the point where it's been six months. I haven't, I've looked at the bike. I feel badly about myself now that I haven't done it. And I kind of feel like I wasted this opportunity. I think the way to reboot would be to go back to that initial, well, why on earth would I train with Tate in the first place? What was the main goal? Why would I go through all this pain in the first place? And the reason is, is that I want a strong heart. I want to live actively into my 90s. And the only way to do that is to train consistently. So taking that same metaphor, the only reason to go through the pain 
of this business is real freedom to work when you want, where you want, who you want. That's true wealth to solve all your money problems. So I would argue that, yeah, you need to start with your why. You might not want it badly enough. You may not be in enough pain. You might be that frog that's at a slow boil and doesn't even realize it and comfortable. So you know at, at some level you want these things, but you probably don't want them badly enough to make it the priority in your life. And I would challenge you then to really think about and write down your why. Do, how badly do you want to not have a commute to work? How badly do you not want to have to be somewhere at a certain time wearing a monkey suit? How badly do you want to have Saturday be the same day as Monday? How badly do you want it? Picture it, visualize it. And then at that point, you could go into the tactics of what Mike said, start building deal flow and Tate and Eric and Scott. But until that is really solidified, you'll go back, you'll fall off the, the wagon again. You'll do a few deals, something will get in the way and you won't do it consistently, even though you had a few wins. Because with wins, what's going to happen, Tate? What do we talk about all the time? If you start getting wins, it's, it's going to snowball, right? It's, it's going to snowball, but inevitably there will be a dip too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to get into some point where it gets really hard. And the, the easy deals, so to speak, they kind of uh, have been taken. You've gotten them all, and now you got to work through it. There will be a dip. There's always a dip. Some of us are in a dip right now on this call. So it's normal. Yeah, so that, that would be, that'd be how I would reboot. And then using that metaphor again, I'd probably go back to Tate and say, Tate, I fell off the wagon. I really enjoyed working out more with you than I did on my own. Can we just reboot? Get me going again. I've, I've got a stronger why now than I did when we first started. That's how I would reboot. You guys want to um, disagree, agree? Eric, what do you think? I like it. I, I think um, you drew a, a very realistic picture of, you know, what can happen to any one of us in the community. I mean, life gets in the way for any number of reasons. And it's, you know, it's easy for things to, you know, one day's okay. And then, you know, you're making excuses the next and it just, it continues to snowball. And it's so easy to go down that path. We have to be um, very diligent to, to avoid that. Um, so I think, you know, as I said, I, I think you did a great job kind of portraying that, that image. Zen master, what are your thoughts? I've got a few of them. One of them that was, uh, that was an amazing, uh, I love that. I love uh, the why and all that. And, uh, also Scott Todd, just getting that wholesale in the marketing, but I got to say, I'm feeling a little bit of a dip right now because I'm looking like when Eric's talking, you can see faded in the background, these books, and you'd have no idea what they are. You just want to know, but they're blurred out. And then Tate has these two cool pictures. I need an office reboot. I got a window in a blank wall. I'm feeling a little dip here on my office situation as a result of that. Sorry to go off topic, but it was just, it became apparent, especially when Eric was just talking, like, you can't even see what that, what is there? What, what knowledge lays there? But you don't know. He, it's all for some reason. He has some special tactic. You can't even see him. Sorry. Comparison is the thief of happiness. Let it go, Mike. Let it go. Okay. Let me go. Hey, Mark, hey, Mark, I'll tell you, though, something that you mentioned, though, like something that you said, you're talking about like when you're, when you're working out with Tate in that, in that example, you're, so you're working out with Tate and, you know, you, you become a customer working out with Tate. It's fun, whatever. You know, I would say that in a lot of things, when you start off learning with somebody else, there is always a dip at the other side. Like I know that for me, when I, when I'm going through like even flying lessons and I have an instructor there with me, you know, in the plane, even though the instructor at this point is just sitting there and kind of talking to me and kind of saying like, Hey, do this or think about this, you know, trying to teach you different ways. Ultimately what happens though, is that you, you become, um, you feel comfortable with him. It's another set of eyes there with you, right? Like it's another set of eyes to help you make decisions, almost like a crutch. So they become a crutch to you. And then when, when you go to fly 
and you're like flying on your own, you're like, oh man, now, now it's on me, right? Like it's on me to make sure that I make the turns properly. It's on me to make sure I control this plane properly because there, there is no one in the seat next to you. You're large and in charge, right? And so then it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't become as fun anymore because you become dependent on somebody. And so the very best way to continue to do that is I agree, like you can go back and, and like re-engage somebody, but also the mere fact that you get in there and start finding like, what is it that I'm afraid of here? Because ultimately it comes down to either your why is not big enough, like you said, or there's an underlying fear of some sort. You're afraid of failure. You're afraid of success. Like, oh my gosh, what happens if I succeed and I can literally quit my job? I'm afraid to quit my job, right? So a lot of times we go down this path and there's something holding you back that you may not even visualize is a real thing. And it could be. So also, like, like you said, challenge the why challenge the fear like what's the fear what's the fear i love it tate what are your thoughts well i was going to say you know yeah definitely challenge the fear but it's okay if you need a reboot there's no shame in that right we all are busy and i see it all the time people come in and they're really really motivated and then something happens and they get back on that horse and they come back re-energized and they they make it right they commit they 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 get the results they were hoping for the first time on the second go around. And, and that's good, right? There's no artificial deadline to when you have to succeed in this business, right? If it takes you four reboots, so be it, right? There's many ways to the top of the mountain and it's okay if it takes you four or five goes, as long as you get there, as long as you're making forward progress, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I love it. I love it. Well, I, I think that was a, a really good topic, and um, which leads us now to our tip of the week. A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. The terrorist hunter is not here, which leads us then to Mike Zano to give us something and put Mike on the spot in real time because I know he is not prepared a tip of the week because we've all become so used to Mimi having that tip. But, oh, but Mike's, he's, he's ready. Mike's to- all about information. <laughs> <laughs> if you get information in the right amount of time, you're ready. <laughs> is, that, is that the tip of the week? No, but that'll be a that good one. I'm going to go with a Zen quote because I know Scott Todd loves them and he misses them. And, I'm, and it's not going to be a reminder to breathe. Um, it's not going to be that simple. So, I want to satisfy him with a new quote. And this one is uh, called, the, it's about the beginner's mind. And uh, I think this is important. I really do, especially for people who are starting out new in this business. Because let's remember, there are people that come to us that are super intelligent and super successful in other endeavors, right? Other areas of their life. And they're looking for, um, you know, another passive income stream or they're looking to see how we do what we do because it's very unique what we do and how we do it. So, This pertains to everybody, but specifically maybe those type of people. It's if your mind is empty, it's always ready for anything. It's open to everything. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. So meaning, I tell people when they come in, and I'm blessed, I get to talk to a lot of people when they're coming into the business, and some of them are extremely successful. And I say, listen, when you go to flight school with Scott Todd, empty the cup, learn the process, learn how to set up the business model. When that is all said and done, then bring back all that information, all that expertise, and it's like a fine seasoning. You're going to be better than the average person. I remember there was a time when at one of the boot camps, one of the, uh, one of the uh, people in our community was, I think, an accountant or something, and, and, and it was almost like forgot that he was an accountant. It was like, it was like listen, don't forget, you have an extremely useful skill set. It's time to bring it back. Like you've emptied your cup, but then don't leave it empty. Like be like, okay, I got this down. I've learned the way that the uh, Land Geek team sets up their business models. I've, uh, I've been under the Sherpa of Scott Todd. Now you start doing deals. Now, if you flipped houses or if you've done a lot of real estate deals or if you have accounting or engineer, whatever it may be, maybe you're a marketing expert, make sure you let that come back because that's going to make you like really superior to, to the average person. I, I love that. I love that. Um, it's one of the things I think that I struggle with is just having that beginner's mind and, and 
trying to eliminate all my prior, you know, experiences and, and letting them sort of color anything that I'm trying to learn and having this, you know, confirmation bias, whatever it is, right. and just letting it all flow and taking it all in. And then, you know, sorting out what's going to work for me, what's not going to work for me. I think it connects to the reboot too, Mark, because if you're limited by the belief that you did it once and it didn't work, that could hold you back. So you've got to enter into a new phase. As everybody on here has said, start again and start fresh. Don't be like, oh, I tried it before and it didn't work. Well, that's not going to help you. Uh, just be like, okay, I'm going to follow the process. The best success I've ever had in this business, if I just put my nose to the grindstone and execute on mailings and my, just the fundamentals. And then the success happens as a result of that. So I, I think that, you know, it, it pertains to this whole topic too of the reboot. I love it. I love it. Um, Tate Litchfield, I want to highlight the student of the week. And I know you've got somebody in mind you want to talk to and uh, just give them a quick shout out. Oh man, we've had a bunch of people just crushing it over the last few days and weeks. And uh, you think, well, first of all, we got to talk about Austin. First of all, Austin, I don't know if anybody saw, but Austin is a professional tennis player. Austin and, Krychek, he's number 22 in the world in doubles. Yeah. yeah. He just won uh, a big competition in uh, Atlanta. So he took first place in that competition, which is just, I mean, incredible. It's, that's, that's the real deal, man. He is a professional athlete um, at his finest, right? And then uh, for a land student success, uh, talk about Bart for a minute because Bart uh, – I had a call with him and it was about his deal of the week, right? And he's like, man, I don't want to send this. I, I don't know. I'm like, just send it. Trust me. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Right. Bark's a, 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 a full-time attorney in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. He sends it, emails me back, says, all right, I sent it. No response. I don't know. Maybe an, a day later, he texts me and goes, all right, I sold it. It worked. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. You got to you gotta stay on the ball here because people really, really, really want what we're selling. And he followed all the right rules of a deal of the week. He made it irresistible. There was a call to action in there. And sure enough, that action resulted in a sale. So now he's actually in the process of outsourcing all of that. So he never has to write another deal of the week again. So one and done basically for him. Perfect. Perfect. I love that. I love the idea of, you know, really being crystal clear that this is building something bigger than yourself. You can't do all the work and you don't want to do all the work. You're not building another job for yourself. And the fact that Bart is competent enough to train someone else to do it and get himself out of that part of the business, that's really the systems and the processes that we teach so that after a year of getting competent, you can get yourself out of the business and really have passive income in the truest sense where you're leveraging other people's time and leveraging other people's money so you can really build true wealth and, and, and do it that way. So congrats, Bart. That's great. And congrats, Austin um, Krychek as well. So guys, are we good? We're good, Mark. Yep. We are good. All right. Well, I want to thank the listeners and just remind them, the only way that we can get Eric Peterson to keep coming on the Roundtable podcast is if you do us three little favors. You got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. If you've got a friend, you've got a family member that you think can benefit from really getting to the point where they have true wealth, and it's a one-time set it and forget it system of the ultimate subscription model of having true wealth in this land investing business, email them the, the podcast, have them get started. Maybe send them a link to Dirt Rich. Um, be a giver. That would really, uh, that'd be really nice as well. So are we ready to do this, guys? One, two, three. Let freedom... Right. Um, Mike, what's up? I love raising my hand. It's so awesome. Um, 
I was wondering if we could add a new segment, like maybe Eric leans back and blindly grabs a book and pulls it up and we see what's in his library. I think the listeners would love that. I know I would. I'm just wondering. Anybody I mean, else? I, I, I'm just assuming it's going to be a lot of Mac books. <laughs> I bet he pulls out a book on the surface without looking. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wrong book, wrong book. <laughs> <laughs> The Culinary Joys of the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> yeah. Forward by Tate Litchfield. Uh, <laughs> Public Speaking 101. Yeah. <laughs> That's in there. Uh, so, so, Tate, you got to talk about Scott's face for a second, shall we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you could do it justice, too, because you're on the bandwagon. No, I, I, I am. Yeah. I didn't know that uh, you were also on that bandwagon. I dropped a knowledge bomb on you guys. You really did. But you got, you got to share it with everybody. All right. This, so, is, this is like life-changing stuff. Because these are <laughs> things like we do every day. <laughs> we were at, uh, uh, where was it? Vegas one night. We were having dinner. And we, for some reason, the topic of shaving came up. And, you know, I said, all right, Mark, give me your phone. And I pulled up on Amazon and I said, you got to order this. This is the greatest shaving cream you'll ever use. Because it turns out, not only is Mark a land geek, he's also a shaving geek, right? Maybe you should buy that domain right now. I, I am. I just bought it. Good. Yeah. So he's a shaving geek. So I gave him uh, my favorite shaving cream, uh, and it's called Taylor of Old Bond Street. Um, pulled it up on Amazon. He bought it. And then it arrives, I think, on Monday or Tuesday that week. You message Scott and I, and you're like, life-changing this is the greatest stuff ever and scott is just resistant to change he was hating on us hating on us like ah why does it take you so long to shave and we're like because you enjoy it it's one of the simple pleasures in life right you don't need to rush these things and he was resistant and eric was too eric's like blah 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 electric razors and we almost became enemies at that point and uh sure enough eric said electric razor i really physically had vomit come out of my mouth and I'd like choke it back. Yeah. So like four days later, Scott messages Mark and I and is like, uh, I bought it. I bought it. He bought the shaving cream, the sandalwood scent. And the next day, you know, he's telling me, oh, my wife thinks I'm so much more handsome right now. I've never had a shave this close. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. It was a knowledge bomb. And now I, I think he's ordered like four or five different scents up to this point. He can't get enough of them. Does, so, does, I mean, is it me? Well, he looks 10 years younger, doesn't he? Not, not true. Not, oh, I, scent, ordered, like, I mean, I can smell it from here. He smells fantastic. I, I do smell fantastic. However, oh, oh look, Zeno's got, got it. Zeno's got it. Zeno's got it. Zeno's too. got it. Oh, oh. oh, Eric's the only one that doesn't have it. Oh, man. The cl- <laughs> it's closing in. Oh, oh boy! Oh, you got the shaver oh. too. I don't have that one, Mike. The get supply shave, the the get supply straight razor. Do you yeah. love it? The weight of it. It's so nice. It has a magnetic stand. Oh, it just says awesomeness all over it. Okay, you, so that was knowledge. I I got the coconut tea though. Like I got coconut. I only have coconut and sandalwood. I only got the two. Sure. If that's what you want to admit, that's fine. No, 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 no. But see, I did it. I did a smart thing. Like I didn't follow your thing because you're sending me this silver tip badger brush thing for like, I don't know, uh, like half your arm and an entire, like, I don't know. You got to sell, you got to sell a massive piece of land just to buy that thing. It's ridiculous. You're, you're dropping the, you're like a baller over there with that thing. I didn't do that. I found one though. A silver badger, a silver tip badger brush. Yep. On Amazon. All right. It's like, it was like 60 bucks, I think. 60 or $70. I can't remember which one. It's but okay. I got that one. And I'm like, okay, let's try this thing. So, you know, you go and you put it in there like the old man style, you know, you fluff it all up. Mm-hmm. Like how, and I'm like the warm, shave. the warm water, the warmth of the brushes. It's like addicting. There's a, it's an addiction. There's an addiction oh, to it yeah. because you do it one time. Like I can't do it just one time. I have to shave and then I've got to reapply Yep, because it feels so good. It does. I mean, anybody who's listening here, 
Just take our word for it. There are four Eric. converts. There's three new converts on this call. Eric is resisting, but we're just going to send him one in the mail so that he has no choice but to get on the bandwagon. Yeah, absolutely. Just Eric, wait, uh, did yo. your Peloton get delivered? Oh, yeah, it's here. What do you think? I love it. I've been riding it uh, like every day. Wow. Who's your favorite instructor right now? You know what? I think I like Dennis uh, so far. I really like his instruction. Like he, he helps me kind of like get the form right and all that kind of stuff. And he's always reminding you through the ride. So for whatever reason, his way of talking about it just kind of clicked with me. So I, I like him right now. Awesome. Awesome. He, he's good. He's good. I, I think I've only taken one Dennis ride actually. I mean, I need to revisit him. I um, took a Ben Aldis ride this morning, the guy in London. I thought it was great. Hmm. Back, back to shaving, though. When Eric shaves, though, he's going to look like he's 19. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, how am I supposed to have just this little bit of scruff if I actually use a, a real razor? That's not going to work. No, you got to get rid of that stuff, man. That, that, was, like, that was like 2018. <laughs> so I, 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 think about Eric, I think Eric should shed this sort of Portlandia hipster image he's got going on. Mm -hmm. Just embrace, you know, middle age. Clean shaving is coming into style. Yeah. Yeah. And well, just look at this podcast. Like how many people have it? It feels good. <laughs> Zeno, have you used that stuff yet? Yeah. And you, I was laughing because today I actually had to do it twice. I was like, it's too good. It can't be over. It's too good to be yeah. over. It is a I just can't believe it. Listen, I, I and listen, it didn't really add that much time because uh, yesterday I checked my time into the shower, checked my time out, fully dressed, 15 minutes, two shaves, two shaves. That's nothing. No. Plus, Scott, you got more time than you know what to do with. This is a good hobby for you. You need yeah. something like this. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, the it really I save on brushing my hair and drying it every day, I can now apply to this. Yeah. There it is. Scott has time to call his neighbors over and shave them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This just got really weird. Barbara, Barbara Moto. He's Barbara probably going to be a Bob now. Shave, shave, shave Moto.com. Shave Moto.com. Mark, Everyone's you said cool. we're going to have a new link by the end of the podcast. So. Yeah, there it is. We got two now. Shaving Geek or? Yeah. Tate, would you recommend going on Amazon and getting the, like the barber shop, you know, uh, thing that they, they warm the towels, like a towel warmer, putting on your face first Ooh, and then I, shaving? I just, that sounds really nice. Uh, I just saw something online for a heated razor. Ooh. I guess it heats it. Yeah. It's uh, by Gillette. It's brand new. It's not cheap. Scott's going to judge us well, two hundred dollars i saw it i i laughed it off yeah i'm like what kind of sucker pays for that thing man mark and i apparently <laughs> i love i love my straight razor oh no no your straight razor is good i, I i'm yeah. getting one of those i'm getting one of those it's i ordered uh i ordered like a off of tate's advice though i ordered like the old safety razor yeah which is feels like i mean it's good don't get me wrong it's like two-sided you, you and i like it but I feel like I, when I was a kid, I had like a fake one of the safety razors, a big, big thing. And I'm like, hey, look, I'm shaving it like I used to as a kid. So that's out. I'm ordering the getsupply.com razor. Awesome. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a blog post, how to live like a land geek and kind of give like all the links to, you know, all the kind of weird things that I do that completely are so life-changing as well like these are like little things that we kind of do every day but elevated because look i have the time to explore this stuff i don't think i could use this razor i've ever put that link in there this one scares me like it's like that's like that's, that's a, a real straight whoa that's a straight razor that's, that's scary. scary look at the one below it the heated one mike yeah if you could master that thing not only are you a bad dude with your own face? But you could also like you can shave with that thing. You're also having a lethal weapon with you, right? And it's just my it's just my razor. Sorry, sir, it's just my razor. 
if anyone's going to be able to ma master, it'll be our martial arts uh, guru, <laughs> right? There's no hope for the rest of us if Mike can't master it. This stuff smells like heaven. I just cracked it, but when I had to bring it up, and it's like a, it's, it, it's instant like zen when you open this up. Listen, yeah. go with the sandalwood. That's I also yeah. really like the rose. Now, I know what you're thinking. Rose, it's mm. mild cell scent, Eric. It's not, it's not overwhelming. It, just, it smells good. It smells clean and fresh. You're going to love it. You'll buy it soon enough. <laughs> I think it's great that Scott got coconut because he's like, I, I look at him, I think like, uh, you know, like uh, not strawberry jack, pina colada guy, right? He's in Florida. So, of course, he went with coconut. Yeah, yeah. And I did just buy, no kidding, I just bought shavemoto.com. It is, it is done. In the books. I own it. You can't go steal it. Can I, can I be a beta tester at your house? Where you Listen, Matt, I have great visions for this website. We're, you said by the end of this call we're having a new website, so we got it. Shavemoto.com. And, Mark, like you're going to give tips on shaving and, like, you know, we can have, like, all of us can be contributors to the shave moto. We should, we should just set up like a live stream of Mark shaving every day. Yeah, that. And then you can watch Mark shave or you can go the electric razor route. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you're going the electric razor route right now, um, <laughs> just, just email me and I'll, let me just change your life. You'll thank me. Just well, you, you, soon. Like, like, like Mike said, like, just empty your mind. And you don't know what you don't know. Let me just help you, please. Soon enough, you'll find this on shavemoto.com. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, this is fun. Um, <laughs> see, see everybody next week. <laughs>